Oh. Instituto Vu Teoretic Física. KU Leuven. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so today you can have, say in English. Hmm? And you can say in English. The American Institute right. of Physics, and that's what's KU Leuven. Leuven. Uh, it's the Catholic University of Leuven. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hello everyone, and uh, today we have Guilherme Oliveira from Catholic University of Leuven, and at Belgium. Uh, Guilherme has studied with us on previously on his undergrad studies, and and now he studies physics. He's doing his masters at Belgium. He will be talking about statistical mechanics. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, even because I I I. I was a member of the group when I was in Brazil, so it's really a pleasure. So I want to give a brief overview of statistical mechanics and and how we do uh, some calculations in statistical mechanics and equilibrium statistical mechanics that we start, and then we will go to non-equilibrium perhaps uh, perhaps more uh, uh, like an information of non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, so I don't take too much of your time. So first, uh, uh, some motivation. Why do we care about statistical mechanics? So uh, there is a remarkable su success of thermodynamics, but there are uh, many limitations, right? So some of you already mentioned to me the uh, some some sort of of bothering. Of, of the theory of thermodynamics because uh, ultimately thermodynamics is a phenomenological theory. So it is consistent in a mathematical point of view, but uh, we cannot derive results from first principles. So uh, the first limitation would be, for example, uh, it is applicable to macroscopic systems. We don't have any information on the mi mi microscopic level. Um, Usually, thermodynamics is applied to systems in equilibrium, thermal equilibrium. I will define this later. And usually, uh, there is some some uh, some generalization in what is called the response theory, but uh, not uh, very um, uh, not very general. Um, and also, there are some relations which we know as uh, equations of state. And we don't know where this comes from. We just go to the laboratory, we measure this, but we don't know. So it's, uh, do you think it's possible to derive, for example, some relation like this? So this is uh, what statistical mechanics is about. Also, um, how a theory like thermodynamics is possible. For example, you have 10 uh, macroscopic variables, for example, the energy, the volume, number of particles, uh, and maybe a couple of more, and how it is possible to have such a, a nice description in terms of these macroscopic variables, because the microscopic helm could be very, very, very compli complicated, right? So it is very interesting this way. So, and then how to go from micro to the uh, ma macro, right? Uh, the micro understanding, how can we go from micro to macro? And in this way, in, in that path, maybe we benefit for such description, right? And, all right. So the statistical parts of thermodynamics, uh, of statistical parts of statistical mechanics, I would like to introduce you better. Um, so let's start with the saying, right? Very famous saying. There are three kinds of lies. Lies, then lies, and statistics. <laughs> but uh, this is not the case for statistical mechanics. And the reason why that's not the case, of course, that we are saying uh, this in a more ordinary way, like, for example, uh, uh, some sort of survey about uh, candidates we will run for the presidents or something like this, but that's not true for statistical mechanics. 
And the reason is called the central limit theorem. So uh, I will state the theorem here. And suppose we have a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables. A random variable would be uh, a function from a set, which I will call the outcome set to the real uh, line, for example. And there is uh, some sort of formality behind it. There is a sigma algebra, a probability measure, but I will not go to these details now. And we have a sequence of it. Uh, these variables, they also, uh, since they are identically distributed, they have, uh, they have the same mean finite variance. So as the number of variables that we consider uh, grows, this other random variable, which I'm defining here, which is the mean, it converts to a uh, normal distribution, okay? So it doesn't matter how, how complicated it is, the, the random variable itself or the distribution of this random variable, the mean random variable always will have a nice distribution in some sense, all right? And so this is what I, I mentioned with this. You have a population, you have the distribution, and you take the average, and then you put in another graph, which is this graph, and then the central limit theorem says that the distribution of this random variable, which is the mean, converges to a Gaussian, to a normal distribution. You see that here, the variance of this distribution is proportional to the inverse of the square root of n. So this means that when we choose larger and larger variables, essentially, uh, this will become uh, narrow and narrow and will uh, converge to a Dirac delta for saying, right? So this is what makes thermodynamics possible because usually in a physical system, we have uh, 20, 10 to the 23 particles and then this deviation of the distribution, uh, I'm assuming that you um, have some notions of, uh, of deviation and all this stuff, but the deviation is really just the, the flatness of this curve. The deviation will become... Um, uh, smaller and smaller. So essentially what we have is that uh, our measure will converge to a point, which is the mean, right? So what thermodynamics measures? Because the number of particles in a system, in a macroscopic system, it's very, very large. It's, it's, uh, it's like overwhelming large. So the mean is what the thermodynamics measure. So this mean could be the energy or the pressure and else, right? So from this point of view, you can see that there is no way of solving, for example, uh, the Schrodinger equation for a system of 10 to the 23 particles or a Newton's law, for example, because it is just too much variables, right? So we have to appeal for a statistical, a statistical description of the system. This is what the statistical is about. Um, okay, so, and now I will say like something which is really, really vague right now. And the art of making sense of this, of this picture, what I mean is that uh, a measure which converges to some sort of limit of large N, for example, this art is, 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 uh, is called the thermodynamic limit, all right? So the thermodynamic limit is something like growing this system uh, large and large to be taken as macroscopic. It's vague right now, but it could be rigorously defined. I will say more about that. So the mechanics part uh, means that roughly there exists a phase space in a function, which is called H, uh, called the Hamiltonian. For each point of gamma, we give the name a microstate, sorry, a microstate, and knowing the microstate for each time gives a complete a description of the system. Okay, there is also a many-to-one map called the macrostate. Uh, it maps microstates in macrostates, right? And it's many-to-one, so uh, many microstates are compatible with the same macrostate. 
At uh, this point, in the phase space, it evolves according to some dynamics. It could be either the Schrodinger, the Hamilton uh, dynamics, um, maybe even more, like some sort of or, or relativistic uh, way, but I will not uh, talk uh, much further about that. And for an isolated system, age does not depend on time, so we can drop these uh, Cartesian products, we can just define age as uh, the state space gamma, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I will just give some examples so it's more con concrete. We have a finite dimensional Hilbert space in a family of vectors, which can be not necessarily orthogonal. And hence, uh, it, it could not, it, it can not be a base. I mean, uh, not it cannot be a base, but uh, it can and cannot be. I mean, it's you choose, all right? So there exists some numbers, which we call probability. And of finding the system in such states. And um, in the last formulas, these uh, wave functions, psi of vectors is, is the microstate, and this d is a macrostate. And the way you see that, for example, for a simple example, to be more concrete even, if you have two spins, for example, you have a spin up, a spin down, and you have these two states, for example. So, so the microstate would be the spin up and spin down, right? Form uh, also the basis of the of this uh, Hilbert space, and these two configurations uh, we can uh, from these two configurations we can ensemble. Uh, sorry, you you can uh, define this D, which is which I defined here, and for this configuration, the magnetization is zero. So this microstate is compatible with the mi magnetization zero, right? But it's, it is not, you see, um, given that the magnetization is zero, you cannot say that if the microstate is this one on the left or this one on the right, all right? So this is why it's a many to one map. These two states, they give the same the same macro states, macro state, which I define here. And this macro state is the macro state of magnetization, magnetization zero or sum of spin zero, right? Uh, the, uh, the other example is a system of any classical part particles. Then the micro state is a point in the six n dimensional phase space gamma, all right? And there is uh, the macro state map. It's not very uh, straight way, uh, straightforward to define. So it is very is determined by the macroscopic information you wish to consider, and there is no direct way, as far as I know, of constructing it. All right, so you have to consider case by case. Um, so statistical mechanics gives a way of constructing such uh, map D. And the equilibrium statistical mechanics itself, it's a, uh, uh, we restrict the classes of system you're looking into. And from the physical systems, we choose only the equilibrium systems, which is a very small set of the possible physical systems, right? And I will define what is equilibrium. And suppose now that we have a Hamiltonian system as previously defined. Hamiltonian system, which has a Hamiltonian. Uh, I don't mean that it is governed by Hamilton dynamics. It could be Schrodinger as well. Uh, so less discussion, as we uh, as we saw, uh, mot motivates treating the point X of the microstate as a random variable. Okay, so this means that we have to introduce a probability measure on the phase space. This probability measure ultimately will be related to the physical aspects that we wish to consider, right? And we hope that this probability measure represents somehow and captures uh, thermodynamic feature, features. And what I mean with that is that this average 
over this distribution of this random variable, which is now my microstate, the average value would be some sort of thermodynamic var uh, value, for example, for large n, all right? We hope that this holds, all right? This is the idea behind it. So we say that the system is in equilibrium if for any physical quantity that can be defined on the phase space, its mean value is time independent. This itself means that the distribution of this random variable in the phase space uh, should be time independent, right? So this will be our definition of equilibrium. Okay, so uh, any questions so far or any remarks? Okay. So we start with a simple system, equilibrium system, the simplest system that you, you can imagine. This is called the microcanonical ensemble. And this system is a completely isolated system. And this is the system that you, in other words, you, can, you don't need to worry about, okay? So for, so this is the picture, right? And I will give an heuristic definition and then I will give the formal de definition of the microcanonical ensemble. So we call a microcanonical ensemble a close isolated, hence in equilibrium, right? Because quantities do not depend on time. But this, I'm supposing, or, uh, from a more uh, formal way, I'm assuming that this uh, system can reach equilibrium, right? When it is closed. This is not a straightforward uh, claim. And uh, you will see more about that in a second. And so it is a system, a Hamiltonian system, which is closed, isolated, and in equilibrium. The word, uh, the word ensemble means a collection of particles or entities. And the word microcanonical means how the system interacts with the world. For those systems, it makes sense in any case to talk about volume, number of particles, and energy, independent of your physical uh, considerations, all right? What I mean with that is that, is that uh, for some systems, for example, it doesn't uh, make sense to talk about temperature, right? For some other systems may not uh, have uh, some sort of, we, we may not have uh, the idea of pressure, for example. But for these systems, because it is close and isolated, it always makes sense to talk about energy, volume, and number of particles. And the fundamental postulate of statistical mechanics says that the microcanonical ensemble, the probability distribution in phase space is uniform. And what this means? If you see this system, it is the simple system that you have to, you can imagine. So we have to treat any variable in this phase space as a, as a random variable, right? And we have to define a probability measure on this phase space. Since this is the most uh, simple system that we can imagine, uh, the, the, the way, uh, or maybe the, the, fair, fair, the <laughs> fairer way, <laughs> or maybe the, the most uh, honest way of defining the, the probability distribution would be a, a uniform probability distribution, right? But that, uh, in the formal point, is not so so straightforward, right? And and this is called the fundamental postulate of statistical mechanics. So in the formal way, uh, we give this this uh, definition. So S is an equilibrium system of n particles with fixed energy e and volume v in a phase space gamma. We fixed. Uh, this delta E uh, greater than zero. I'm just fixing that uh, for a formal, uh, for a technicality. I, I, I don't really need that, but I want to define in this way. 
such that this is really vague, this statement, uh, delta E is much uh, smaller than E. It's vague from a mathematical point of view, but it just means that uh, this ratio, it's uh, less than one you can think about, and or it is an epsilon or something like this, right? Uh, what I mean is that we want that this delta E should be, should be small. So we define the microcanonical probability measure on this phase space as um, as this uniform distribution on the phase space, okay? So if X belongs to this uh, set, we define this probability measure as this, and if the set is not there, it is zero. And this gamma E is the set of points in the phase space which the Hamiltonian has constant energy, right? So, so uh, in another words, you have your phase space, you have your energy, which is a Hamiltonian from a physical point of view, and you have this this energy, this Hamiltonian, because it is a closed and isolated system, this Hamiltonian will be constrained in this, in this shell of energy, right? Of constant energy. And what you're doing now, you're saying that uh, your microstate, which is the, the X, your microstate, yeah, sorry, your mi microstate, which is this point X, uh, will be equally probable, right? Uh, each microstate X, which belongs in this place, will be equally probable to, to happen, okay? So when you go to the laboratory, you will measure something, and nature will choose to you the microstate it wants to show. Statistical mechanics is saying that if you have an isolated system, uh, any microstate compatible with the dynamics of the system will be equally probable, okay? Um, that's the, the uh, heuristics behind the microcanonical ensemble. We also uh, define a function called Boltzmann entropy, uh, whose definition is this. It is a constant here, k, and this log is just the log of the volume of, of the, uh, with respect to this measure, is the volume with respect to this measure of the shell of energy, okay? We call S the microcanonical ensemble. Then, <coughs> yes. Uh, what happens if we don't take uh, delta E very small? Why yeah. is that necessary? Yes, yeah, so, so this is a technical remark because it's, it is a probability measure in, a, in the phase space. So if you fix the energy to be E and not have this, this delta E, then uh, this set will always have measure zero, right? No, uh, because, well, yeah, no uh, my question was the opposite. Well, uh, in, you assume something like delta E is very small relative to E. Uh, yes. What happens if we don't assume delta E is small? Why do I have don't to take it? Delta. Yeah, like big delta E. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so from the from the mathematical point of view, you can define uh, uh, the, this this definition continues to make sense, right? In the mathematical point of view. Yeah. But from the physical point of view, you were saying that uh, you have an uncertainty of energy, and you don't know. Uh, which value of energy you can uh, designate to the system, right? So, in other words, you're changing your D function, that macro, macro map, the D function, you're changing it, right? Mm -hmm. because, uh, uh, because you want to, to be fixed by your physical insight. And this will determine a macro, uh, the macro map D, which I previously defined, this will define this macro map. Mm -hmm. So this map will be uh, just a um, mic microstate which has constant energy, right? But if you if you uh, let the energy has a small uncertainty, you are changing this map. So automatically, we want to put, we want to say, to point the finger to the system and say, we have this energy, which is E. 
So this is why I take this uncertainty very small. Okay. This uncertainty has nothing to do with quantum mechanics. But for the formal point of view, this is, uh, it, it is very good because we can define the probability measure and it's not going to be zero. But uh, I just have to say that this is not necessary. This is just a formal remark. Okay. This delta E is not necessary at all. Mm -hmm. You can define the probability measure as a Dirac delta, for example. Uh, and, and, but I don't want to do this here, okay? Okay. Hey, uh, it, is that clear, uh, my answers? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, so, so I hope this is not too abstract or too uh, difficult to understand. And so this is the definition, right? So now we go back and say, why makes sense to define the probability measure as uniform? My first answer will be very silly and will be, why not, right? The second answer will be a bit uh, fair, which will be like, we don't know nothing about the system. So it seems uh, reasonable to take for this system, which is the simple system that we can imagine, and we can define this probability measure to be, uh, to be uniform. So, so we don't know nothing about the system, we know that there is microstate, but they are all equally probable. So that's the physical insight that you have to do. But this, uh, so uh, yeah, I will, I will come back to this photo, but uh, just a second. Um, so this is called the fundamental postulate and it is a big problem for theoretical physics. This fundamental postulate of uh, statistical mechanics, which says that the energy should be, that, sorry, the probability measure should be uniform, could be ju justified with three hypotheses, right? But there is no mathematical proof of any of those. <laughs> there are very, uh, very restrictive claims and very difficult to prove for uh, a wide, a wild, um, sorry, a wide range of physical processes. One is the ergotic hypothesis, which roughly says that uh, the system will travel in the phase space according to the dynamics. And if you give enough time, it will cover all the microstates, okay? So this is the ergotic hypothesis, roughly. I'm not giving the definition here. Another word, uh, another, sorry, another uh, way of, of, of getting, uh, of proving the fundamental postulate will be a, mixes, a mixing system. Mixing implies ergodicity. There is a mathematical definition of mixing. And roughly, it means that you, prep, uh, you, you don't know the initial state of the system. You, so, so you have a probability distribution for the, the initial state of the system, and then this will evolve and will take place in phase space, will take place of the whole volume of the phase space, okay? And I know it is very vague, but uh, I, don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this uh, fundamental problem, and, but we can discuss afterwards uh, if you want to. And the other one is maximum Gibbs entropy. And the, the, this roughly means that uh, there is a function, this function, with, uh, sorry, this functional, which you can define in the, in the phase space, or, or sorry, or, or, the, or the space of the probability measures in the phase space is functional. And uh, you can prove that, uh, the, the this p this function p this measure p which maximizes this entropy it is the the uniform probability distribution okay so if you assume that the Gibbs entropy should be maximized then uh, it is a straightforward proof to prove that this <laughs> that's straightforward I I know I'm 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 just shouting nonsenses here but like uh, it's just a uh, you can prove that uh, this P should be uh, uniform, okay? And 
this is really uh, a problem now in statistical mechanics, and we hope that uh, we can prove for a uh, there are some results already from these proofs, uh, but not nothing really um, a general. Okay, so so I just come back here to so you can appreciate how serious this business is. This entropy we define, it's written on Boltzmann grave stone, gravestone, all right? So the entropy here, if you see, it, it's really the power of the numbers, right? Because this, this, uh, this volume would be uh, proportional to the how much microstates are, uh, are available, right? This is the volume of, the, of this phase space. And the phase space, it's made of, 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 of microstates. So, so really, the Boltzmann entropy is counting how much microstates are variable, available in some way, right? So entropy in statistical mechanics is really the power of numbers. And we wish this definition, of course, is motivated. We wish that this entropy should be equal to the thermodynamic entropy in this called thermodynamic limit, which I, I would, it will be remain vague for some while. Okay. So this is a uh, Boltzmann. Uh, Boltzmann killed himself. Uh, it's a tragical a story, um, and it is uh, usually it's a very funny remark uh, that a lot of people who worked with statistical mechanics killed themselves. Uh, it's not funny, I know, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, interesting, right? Okay, so so you only need a microcanonical ensemble in order to statistical mechanics work. So this uh, equilibrium statistical mechanics. Sorry. So, so I could stop the talk here and say, that's it, guys. But it's very difficult to, 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 to work with the microcanonical ensemble. So we define another another ensembles, and all of these ensembles they could be uh, you can prove that they are consequence of the microcanonical ensemble, right? Um, so what I mean, uh, each ensemble roughly means choosing another probability measure in the phase space for some macrostate class, right? And what I mean with macrostate class. Um, is that the ensemble interacts with the world. I said that the microcanonical ensemble, it's isolated, closed, there is a fixed energy, uh, volume, and, and uh, number of particles, right? Uh, but what if we don't have a fixed energy, but we have a fixed temperature? This is called the, the bath, right? Uh, that we um, learn in thermodynamics and and there is something related with the free energies and stuff. I will not say so much about that. But there is the canonical ensemble. In the canonical ensemble, we fix the... There is a, the system, okay? There is the thermal bath, which has a fixed temperature. And the, and the system has V as the volume and the number of particles fixed, all right? So the system interacts with the reservoir and the reservoir maintains the temperature of the system constant as T. Uh, so the canonical ensemble uh, generates microstate which has T, V, and N constant, all right? And you can prove by using the microcanonical ensemble and that's the, beautiful of, uh, the beauty of the statistical mechanics. It's a very beautiful calculation. If you're interested, you can uh, look in the literature. You can prove that the, the probability distribution for the system, you are not interested in the, the reservoir. It's, it is something like this, right? And you see the notion of equilibrium here is that even though the system uh, may change energy, uh, this does not depend on time, okay? In the in the scale of the probability measure, you don't see time, okay? And uh, and the argument, uh, you see that it, it is considering the system and the reservoir as a closed system, and then applying the microcanonical ensemble and else and else. There is uh, other uh, ground canonical ensemble, 
and now we we make the the number of particles also vary we have to make a technical remark for example we can define the phase space for uh, as previously defined for a fixed number of particle ends and then we define another phase space which you you take as the union of all these this this other phase space with the n fixed and then you can also prove i will not do this uh, this is called uh, you can um, prove that the, the the probability distribution that you must define by consider the micro canonical ensemble is of this type and there is also the pressure ensemble i will not even uh, bother to give the 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 distribution in here, the the measure. I will not uh, give the measure here, but there are similar um, similar philosophy. And here, you 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 the the variables which remain uh, fixed is are this one, which makes sense to talk about, right? So that's good, right? Because you know, uh, for the people who did uh, thermodynamics, you have these types of bath. And you can uh, make thermodynamics about this. And this is exactly what you're doing, right? We want ultimately, remember, to have a theory which uh, can justify thermodynamics in a more theoretical grounds. And uh, that's good. But uh, statistical mechanics is not only about that, because uh, we can uh, look for microscopic systems as well. So it is more uh, powerful. So I give some uh, uh, two examples. Uh, the ideal gas. Uh, suppose we have a closed container with a volume V, so microcanonical ensemble. Uh, we call it an ideal gas if the if this Hamiltonian function is given uh, with this, given by this, where R and P are the uh, are the coordinates of the n particles and P are the momentum. Uh, so, as a measure in the phase space, we take this. This, uh, you see that uh, that this should be justified by some argument and or some calculation, right? Uh, and this can be done as well. I will not say much about it, but, but uh, if you want to, we can discuss as well. And it can be shown that the volume compatible with these dynamics with the microcanonical ensemble is given by this right you just integrate uh, it is a uh, spherical you use a, a is a sphere right this defines a sphere with a fixed uh, e or or a shell right a spherical shell and you can prove that this volume is given by this and just to appreciate the powerful of statistical mechanics uh, for large n I would define vaguely as a thermodynamic limit. The Boltzmann entropy is given by this term. There is a epsilon here, which goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So this is the Boltzmann entropy. And if you define the pressure and temperature as uh, it uh, exists, in the literature of thermodynamics because you hope that in this limit uh, the thermodynamics works, right? You're essentially describing a macroscopic uh, macroscopic system. So this re really means that as n goes to infinity, you have a macroscopic system. And, and the, for those microscopic system, you have uh, what is called thermodynamics, right? So you define the pressure using the entropy as uh, thermodynamic do, thermodynamics do, and then you will see that these relation holds, holds, right? And just a technical remark, you have to first define the temperature and then the pressure, because as I, I, I said er, earlier, uh, for the microcanonical ensemble, it does not make sense to talk about fixed pressure and fixed temperature, right? So, so these, you have to imagine that these are like the mean values under this probability measure, which is uniform, all right? So, so this is really the mean value. You could use the probability distribution, which is stated here or in the previous slides, or the, the probability measure, you can use it 
to calculate the pressure and temperature, but then you have to define the pressure and temperature as function in your microstate, uh, your phase space. This is not so easy. So by defining the entropy, we give a direct way of relating, um, of relating the thermodynamics with statistical mechanics, right? And also, uh, the statistical mechanics always give the, the absolute entropy, absolute quantities. There is no integration uh, as in thermodynamic exists, there is no integration constant, okay? which you can, you, you, which you have to measure to, to, to put the value in there, right? So another class of systems and these are the lattice models, and it is the analysis in all its glory. And I worked in the Department of Mathematics. I work with the lattice models. I work with uh, which is called the, the Ising model. And for those type of models, you can do everything formal. Formal, I mean, with real analysis and real nasty calculations as well. And convergency and all these uh, tricks of uh, analysis, analysis you can use and else. So I just want to present you a model, which is very famous. So we will consider a finite set of ZD. We will define the phase space as um, the cardinality number of copies of this minus in one and plus one. Then a microstate is an element of this phase space. And uh, it is of the form of a sequence of plus ones and minus ones, right? And this sequence has the cardinality of this lattice, okay? We also will consider a set of random variables that goes from the phase space to minus and plus one. And this set of variables we call it spin. And it just assigns for every point in the lattice a plus or a minus one. Okay? So imagine you have a lattice. Let, let, uh, let us imagine in 2D you have a lattice, uh, points in the lattice. And for each point in the lattice, you are assigned randomly with equal probability uh, a, a value plus one or minus one, okay? Which I call spin. So we define the Ising model by defining this Hamiltonian age in this phase space, like we always do, by this quantity, okay? So what means here? You are taking uh, the lattice and you're saying that the end, uh, sorry, you're taking the configuration in your, uh, the microstate, which I also call as configuration, I'm sorry, microstate. So you are saying that for each microstate, you have energy. And the energy is really this expression. So the energy is, um, if you have two, uh, this um, equivalence class, like this, uh, uh, not a class, uh, the equivalence relation means that the, the spins they are neighbors. Uh, they are neighbors if and only if the distance of, uh, of, of the points of those two spins in the lattice are one, okay? So neighbors are really neighbors in the sense that they uh, have their hands uh, given together. And for example, for 2D, you have four neighbors, neighbors, right? Each spin has four neighbors. For 1D, each spin has two neighbors and so on. So you're saying that if the neighbors ha has the same value, the energy is small because in this case, it is a negative, negative uh, quantity. If the neighbors do, do not agree in the spins, then it is a plus or a minus, and then the energy raises, all right? And you can also define this H uh, which is uh, which favors a spin, uh, and this age is usually called the magnetic field. So the the uh, this age favors spins which are aligned with the age. All right. So 
So age, uh, we usually uh, imagine that age is positive. Then if the spin is positive, then uh, this contributes uh, less to the energy. If the spin is negative, then this is a plus and contributes more to the energy, all right? So the Ising model is the, defined by this, this Hamiltonian. Uh, take now, for example, and then this, this, this is just for fun, take now the example uh, where the phase space is not minus one and one, but minus one, zero, one. And this we'll call, um, and then uh, it's not uh, plus and minus one is spin. You can have pl uh, minus one, zero, and plus. So you define the bloom Merigrift's model by setting this Hamiltonian. This is a much more difficult in an analytical point of view. This is a nightmare and, and, and very difficult to analyze this model, all right? So this is called the bloom Merigrift's. It used to, to, to uh, the Ising model is used to, to many things. And one of these things is to, um, uh, to uh, furnish a model to uh, fer ferromagnetic models, ferromagnetic samples and paramagnetic samples. I'll not say much about that, but just I'm just saying that this is used in the literature, typically to to have uh, to represent a physical system, right? And the Ising model, this this system is called a ferromagnetic system, and the Bloom and Merigrift usually is a mixture of, of, of superfluid helium in a lattice, for example, but don't, don't care too much about <laughs> that. In both cases, you define the probability measure using the canonical ensemble. So in this uh, context, there is a temperature which you can define in the model and uh, the, and the, this, uh, in, this last line is just the previous line, uh, but in a mathematical way, right? So you define the probability of each element, each microstate, you define the probability of it as, as this, right? So the probability is exponentially uh, decreasing with the, the energy, right? Which makes sense, right? Because when you have um, a, a great energy, large energy, then the configuration should cost a lot to nature to, to, to be made. And beta is just the inverse of temperature, right? I just put it in this way because uh, I didn't have space here. And all right, so I'm just going to say something really quick. Uh, for the Ising model, uh, the thermodynamic limit can be rigorously defined. You construct a finite uh, sequence of finite subset, subsets which converts to ZD in some sense. This assumptions means uh, the Van Hove limit. And uh, you can talk, um, I can talk more about this if you're interesting, but I'm not saying much about it. For each finite subset, lambda n, there is this a probability measure, right? Which is the, 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 another, the other one. So you can ask yourself, if this probability measure probability measure can converge to another probability measure in ZD, right? This is another problem. And for the Eisen model, it can be rigorously shown that for D greater than and equal to two and H equal to zero, there exists a, a beta or temperature, which depends on D, the dimension called the Kuhi temperature or critical, te critical temperature, such that in this limit that I just said to you, the Van Hove limit, one, for T greater than TC, uh, a unique probability measure can be constructed from the sequence. And two, for T uh, smaller than TC, a unique probability measure can no longer be constructed. And we say that the system suffered a phase transition. Okay, so this is called the fa a phase transition. It is a is a powerful uh, concept with uh, statistical mechanics is our current um, theory to deal with it. So you're saying that for large temperatures, uh, a unique probability measure can be constructed, and for small temperatures, uh, this is not really the case. 
And if you're thinking about this, this convergency, uh, the convergency is something called uh, maybe uh, the Ries, uh, Markov, Kakutani representation theorem in this sense. Okay, I'm not, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I'm just saying. Okay, so what time is it? Okay, so, so I'm just, I'm finishing. Just want to, this is more, and uh, now it's informational wise. Okay, I hope that the talk is not too much abstract or not too much, I don't know, fishy or uh, statistical mechanics uh, can be a rigorous uh, subject in mathematics. And, and, uh, but it's different from from what the group is usually considering, right? <laughs> so I'm re really looking forward to a categorification of statistical mechanics. Um, if you do so, uh, let me know. Um, so uh, the power of statistical mechanics. So uh, we have a theoretical formulation for entire thermodynamics. I know it's not; it's very difficult to understand in a couple of slides. But uh, you, you have a formulation of entire ther thermodynamics based on first principles. But no, not only this, I, I already said, you, you don't need to worry about large systems. And you can look for fluctuations. Fluctuations typically um, appears for smaller systems. And fluctuation means that you have this distribution which statistical mechanics uh, tells you that it must be so. So... What if, what is the probability that the system of the, or, or, or the nature misses this equilibrium distribution, right? So this is a fluctuation. So you talk about probability of not being an equilibrium distribution, but some other distribution. This is called large, large deviation theory. Uh, statistical mechanics is compatible to relativity, classical mechanics, quantum mechanics. It's, uh, I think, it's the only physical theory, as far as I know, that, that it is uh, compatible. I'm not sure. I, I, I could, uh, I can be talking nonsense, but um, it's something to think about. Uh, for example, it explains the uh, Bose-Einstein, the Fermi-Dirac distributions. Okay, so. Explain the sense. I mean, you have to go to quantum. Uh, electrodynamics to explain these distributions, but but um, uh, statistical mechanics. Uh, I mean, this is a it can be applied to quantum electrodynamics. Uh, that's what I mean. So theoretical grounds, for example, for black black, bo uh, black body radiation. Um, it's our current theory to describe phase transitions. And in this context, there is a beautiful thing called, called universality class, which uh, is very nice, very nice. You, you really should look for it. It is, uh, for me, it's uh, uh, it is an amazing result. It's a mathematical result and also physical that some classes of systems, they share um, universal properties. Uh, near uh, a phase transition, what we call the criticality. So, uh, so in, it's very nice, right, to, to see that nature, even though there is a criticality, nature somehow, um, somehow nature uh, has some sort of, of, of pattern in it. So there is a, there are corrections to many equations of state provided by thermodynamics. For example, is the uh, video expansion is one 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 way. Uh, uh, this video expansion makes correction for for the equations of state. You know, PV equal n R T. Uh, the video expansion uh, provides corrections to the uh, equation of state. And when you consider some, some, uh, some interactions among the particles of the gas, okay? So it's a natural environment to look for non-equilibrium. Oh, oh, by the way, you cannot do this with thermodynamics. 
uh, uh, natural environment to start looking for non-equilibrium systems, introducing the time component, right? So, so this is a stochastic process, Markovian processes, which is one class of stochastic process. Uh, in these systems, there is something called the detailed balance. Uh, it is a robust way of defining equilibrium. Very robust, um, very interesting as well. Uh, uh, is a theory, for example, randomization group can be studied in, in great detail, right? So not so, so strange as in quantum electrodynamics can be made formal even. I would say so. Well, let's see. Uh, but that's all right. Um, and for example, there are fluctuation dissipation relations and in equilibrium and non equilibrium. And this model is what my advisor likes to say what fluctuates, dissipates. And it's a very profound uh, concept, which is true. Wherever you go, it is true, it's like conservation of energy. So, so, I mean, in equilibrium, right? So in non-equilibrium, there are some changes in these relations. Maybe there, is, there are violations of these relations and else. So it's very nice. And also, I don't like this, this term, but there is a arrow of time, right? So you can make sense of these, these things which thermodynamics says to us in a more concrete way using statistical mechanics okay so this is a this is a break i just want to uh, give, a, give a break because i just choose a beautiful slide and and so great right now and i like this 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 very much <laughs> up until now there is some remark or anything um questions it is vague or it is uh, not good uh, <laughs> what do you think about uh, I'm liking it. I, I have a question because uh, so far you we usually think of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, uh, at least I think of it as gas gases, like uh, not like solids and everything. And yes. Do I, I and I, I do believe that this formalism does explain solid state or etc. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so, very glad that you asked this because it, that, that's the theory to describe solid state physics, right? Semiconductor physics and else. And Sorry, so, yeah. my question is like uh, if this recovers solid, solid state physics, yeah, is there a general way of recovering like the classical mechanics of solids from statistical mechanics? Just like we re do recover phenomenological thermodynamics. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So can you can you can you uh, ask again? So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, like when, when we think of gases and statistical mechanics, when we take a, a large scale limit, we do get mm -hmm. uh, phenomenological thermodynamics. Do yes, we also exactly. get classical mechanics when we think about solids? Mm, so you were thinking about uh, taking some sort of limits uh, or solids, for example, and then uh, think about this limit as a classical mechanics or something like this. Yeah. Do we get Newton's law, for example? Yes. Yeah, so um, so it, it is uh, kind of different, right? Because um, it's... What you're saying is that um, these microstates and there are functions defined on these states, and these functions you can assign a probability law for them, and in the limit of large numbers, which is um, so by the central limit theorem, you can give a meaning to what is called the the uh, variables in thermodynamics, right? Mm -hmm. so, for example, uh, hydrodynamics uses this to make laws for hydrodynamics as well, what is called the Navier-Stokes law. This is some, this is some kind of, of uh, in the direction of what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but uh, but for a general system like a quantum system, and then you make some sort of limits, and then uh, and then you get uh, arrive at the Newton's law. It it seems much more fundamental than uh, statistical mechanics, in, at least in the way I see it. There are many kinds of effective theories where you can, you have microscopic degrees and then you go to some sort of limit and then you have an effective description. Uh, hydrodynamics is one example. Uh, thermodynamics is another example. There is a kinetic theory. But, uh, and maybe I can even talk more about something strange in the end. But uh, that's the way I see it. So I don't, I don't know. I, I think I don't have a, a very, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I, I have a very good end for you, right? Okay. Uh, no, um, I see that uh, perhaps this question specifically is too fundamental. But yeah, it, like you said, yeah. it's, it's like yes. we, when we first started. You, you uh, my point is. You would have to define statistical mechanics in a much broader way. You would have to define microstates as theories, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your microstates are a theory, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. It, yeah. So that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I and, just and, want to say, uh, sorry? And when I'm asking this question, is perhaps like I'm trying to connect uh, what this description with familiar geometry, like simplex geometry and stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. That's something to think about, really. Very good. Uh, so I just want to say a few things about non-equilibrium statistical mechanics, all right? So uh, equilibrium statistical mechanics, uh, despite highly non-trivial, is well formulated in terms of the Gibbs ensemble theory, that thing which I was talking about. There is no such formalism in non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. So you have to see case by case and maybe classes of system and, and else, right? So what, what we did so far, we consider a system of many constituents microscopic features were summarized in what we define to be a microstate, a point in phase space. We also define macro constraints in which the word macrostate is then applied, right? The macro constraint is what an ensemble representation is all about. It is more formally uh, a measure in this space. Um, we define an equilibrium system in which time does not play a role in the macro world. Uh, it is the statistics are time independent, right? Then equilibrium statistical mechanics answers all how many questions you have about these systems. So where is time? Uh, Non-equilibrium starts from this uh, this this strange uh, feeling that time is lacking, right? So. Okay, so so there are three stages of non-equilibrium, I would say. The first state, stage is the dynamical aspects of equilibrium. It's something which people were, were worry, worried about in the 19th century. And it's like this. You start from equilibrium, and then you take your baseball bat or something and you strike your system the system goes out of equilibrium. Maybe you don't you want to use a baseball bat. Maybe you want to use a pillow. <laughs> you don't want to perturb very much. And then you witness how the system goes back to equilibrium. In fact, uh, does it go? There is some relaxa relaxation. There is some return to equilibrium. Why this happens, right? Okay. Um... So what there's, uh, I just said, maybe you start away from equilibrium and then witness how the system goes back to it. Or maybe you start from equilibrium and then perturb the system. This is what is called like the response theory and, and else. So um, usually some sort of equation that, uh, that is playing, uh, plays a role in this is called the Boltzmann equation. All right, this is the equation which I wrote here. I don't want to, I will not bother to explain it. Just uh, 
just appreciate this equation a bit. Uh, another sort of equation could be the Navier-Stokes equation, right? And then you see how this uh, returns to equilibrium. In fact, there is a smart guy who worked with this equation called the Boltzmann equation. And that's uh, Cedric Villani. Mm -hmm. And Cedric Villani wo uh, won the Fields Medal for proving convergence to equilibrium for the Boltzmann equation. Okay. Cool. Uh, just a, just a, like, uh, just a remark. I think uh, Cedric Villani uh, looks like Egon very much. <laughs> so so we, now you have the physical system. Uh, uh, by the way, by the way, uh, there are really nice <laughs> videos of Cedric Villani in YouTube. I, I really recommend you to look for it. Uh, very nice, very, very beautiful mathematics and very uh, nice, uh, nice things. So you have a physical system, you have the equilibrium system, and then we we uh, just um, we just enlarge the size of our set of physical system which we can describe. Another uh, stage of non-equilibrium would be the stationary study of stationary non-equilibrium, right? Or steady non-equilibrium. So this in this sort of system. Uh, uh, appears what is called driving, for example. So currents, right? For example, semiconductor, or, or there are other things which you can think about, like a, a circuit, or even like models uh, uh, which are in contact with different equilibrium reservoirs, for example. You have a cold, sorry, a cold, a hot reservoir, and there is some sort of current which goes to this system. In fact, you can even ask, does the current miss, for example? The current uh, should be, for example, from hot to cold, right? But does the current miss? Uh, there is a probability of this happening. This is some sort of fluctuation as well, right? So, so, the, so it is non-equilibrium in contact with equilibrium, right? This stage to prove. And, and then we enlarge it once again, physical, physical system. And the, the third stage is a more metaphysical, right? So the second stage was equilibrium, non-equilibrium in contact with equilibrium. The third stage is non-equilibrium in contact with non-equilibrium. Right? So it is typical of biological systems a large class of systems in nature, active ma matter, uh, me uh, active media as well, turbulence, and and for example, should be a uh, 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 media in contact with the stage two system, for example, which is non-equilibrium, right? So, like you have here particles, uh, you have hot, cold here which makes this uh, yellow area a non-equilibrium area and non-equilibrium. Uh, and then you have really small particles in here. And these particles, they have some sort of non-equilibrium uh, degrees of freedom. So these particles, they bounce in larger particles, which we call probes, and then uh, makes the probe, the probe uh, walks around, for example. And these probes, we want to study it, study it, right? So we want really to look to the probes. We don't care about the rest. So there are particles with movement and make, make some sort of dynamics, which is non-equilibrium. There are some degrees of freedom, which are non-equilibrium. For example, I can give one example, a run and tumble particle, which is a particle that, uh, uh, that has a direction of velocity and then at some point, it changed the direction of the, this velox, velocity. Oh, and, and then it's a Poisson process and all this stuff. But then uh, this, it, changed the, the velocity, it changes the velocity um, and it makes an active particle because of this. And, you know, like a bacteria which has a stomach. I don't know if a bacteria, uh, probably a bacteria <laughs> does, does not uh, have a stomach, right? But... It has a stomach, and 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 you say like, 
and she, uh, the bacteria sees a, a, a for example a food and then it goes for the food but then the food's not uh, there anymore and then it changes direction to other food uh, I don't know a piece of food that it can uh, find in the horizon so this is one type of it and then you put probes in it and you see how the probes movement um, and and all this stuff Okay. The main point is that in non-equilibrium, you usually don't have access to the measure, the probability measure. Okay, There is no way of defining the probability measure for a large class of system, maybe for a small class of system, but not for large classes of system. Right? So that's it. And then once again, you expand again the physical systems that you may want to describe. So, yes, so I think this is, uh, this is my talk. I hope it is some, some way productive. I hope, um, I hope uh, you, you understand more or less what it is about. Uh, statistical mechanics is a huge science and it's very difficult to grasp in, in, in a few minutes. Um, and, but I, I, I hope it's somewhat what some sort of productive right and may uh, maybe this gives give you some ideas to, to ca categorize statistical mechanics i don't know <laughs> and that's it thank you very much for the invitation i hope um you like it okay so these are some references uh some good references this ref uh, sorry this reference is statistical mechanics of lattice system uh, it's written by Sasha, which was a former professor of, of UFMG, and it is very nice. It's completely formal in a mathematical way. Very nice book to look for if you want to know more about this. Okay, okay. Uh, first, let's all please thank Guilherme for the nice talk, cool talk, please. <laughs>